she delivered drag legendary iconicness that like we've been waiting on for literally like seven years, you know? And we've been waiting for someone to do a good, a good Beyonce. Beyonce. Like, <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Mirror Mangle. And Chloe Curiosity. And welcome to another Mangle morning. Ooh. Woo! You look very like psychedelic and fresh. Yes, and thank you. You're serving seven, like 60s, 70s, and 90s. Yes, and all the colors of the rainbow. And it, everything is so detailed. I love like the mushrooms and the hair oh, and the jacket. Oh, thank you. I love that. And I'm obsessed with your look too. Oh, this thank you. This is so cute. This was also just, you know, pieces we put together. If I was a Real Housewives of Miami doing a performance, I'm putting out my single. This yes. Is cool. You know? I live. <laughs> Beyonce, of course, just released Renaissance, and we're here today to talk about the Renaissance of Delta work. Ooh. We'll get into it, but I love what we're gonna be talking about are queens who've had Renaissances post drag race and and how they come about and what happens. Right. We're gonna get into all of that, but before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Push your helping support the channel. Now you can also Support the channel by tipping on Venmo like these fine folks did. I feel like I didn't do a good job at explaining what we're here to do today, but that's fine. <laughs> Logan F. Leonardo S. who said we should do a video of the most tops and bottoms. Earlier this year, we did a video called Power Tops and Power Bottoms of each season. Type in Mirror Mangle and then whatever <laughs> idea you have, and I guarantee we probably have already done it. Right. <laughs> but the good thing is, keep sending these to me too, because first off, I love money. But second off, sometimes it reminds me, oh, if we have done it, then we could redo some of them. Right. Some of them, with so much Drag Race, we can update all the time. Right. Uh, also, big shout out to Jason J, who, this is hilarious. He gave some really, really old references. Said that he's been watching old videos. He said, I'm tipping you for Brandy T. Mangle, which is the only makeover I've ever done on the channel. Oh Made my gosh. my straight friend. Literally one of the first videos ever on the channel. <laughs> and then uh, he also tipped us for us having to pause because we were laughing so hard at this um, try not to f laugh challenge. <laughs> it was a clip where... They took the clip of RuPaul saying what you two just did in this moment to Alyssa and Roxy about like how amazing the lip sync was. And they edited the clip to have Ru saying that to Pearl and Miss Fame for their lip sync. Oh God, And it's just <laughs> it's hysterical. But I love the flashbacks. Take a look at this art here. Uh -huh. Zay Lilac? I think that, yeah. Zai or Zay? That's so cute. Uh, I'm like remade into like an anime. Yes, me. that's Mira as an anime. That uh, looks like a hard blunt bang too. I like that. Yes. I don't really, I don't think I have any gingers with bangs. Yeah, we need to see with a hard blunt bang like that. A ginger. The only time I do it is for Gale Weathers. Yeah. Which, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> almost every week I have to tell myself not to go get <laughs> Like it's one of those looks that for some reason I want to go get all the time. Um, Because it's so good. Because it's just so fun. I just love Gail. And it, I feel like- One I time we need to do one with you as Gail and I'll be um Casey Becker. Because I've done yeah. that before. Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> Halloween's coming out. Yes. <laughs> Christian from Costa Rica in his mirror mangle shirt. Aww. We're reaching all the way into the- Oh, in Costa Rica. Yeah, Costa Rica. The Caribbean. That's in the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've been to Costa Rica before. Have you? How was yes, it? Yes. It was really fun. Very gorgeous. Did you meet Christian? Yeah, I think I saw him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Christian got his shirt at mirrormangle.redbubble.com. You can get your merch there, or we have additional merch available over on dragqueenmerch.com. Send us your photos and you'll be featured in a video. I have to share something with you, and it might end up being a new addition to the set, but it is the chicest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> My hand and yours. Ah! No! It's, that is it's the actually chicest wind chime I've ever seen. So cheap. <laughs> Bought the actual one from the Jimmy Lee Curtis website. Girl! <laughs> and so I was saying like, what do I do with this? <laughs> also, I, I could use it outside as an actual wind chime, but I could also use it on the set. I have a hook here. It's really very chic. Cause like, yeah, as long as it doesn't look bad on camera, but... I'm screaming! Like, My favorite! I love it! Our dinner's ready. <laughs> ring ding ding! <laughs> I will say, okay, not to like brag on the actual wind chime, it actually is pretty, and you can take this part off. Like, this is a okay. little excessive. Yo, um, you could hang your own little charm. I could hang my own face, yeah. Oh, A mere mango. My hand in mine. Yeah! <laughs> um, but also, the sound it does make is actually prettier it than is? most wind chimes. Yeah. Like, not to try to sell it. They don't need that, because I think it sold out. Yeah, I actually looked on there, I'm not going to lie, and they were all sold out. I know, so. like, <laughs> shortly after I bought mine, I would, like, it did sell out, so I was happy I got it. Also, they sent 
On my hand and yours, what is this? This cracks me up. <laughs> it's a coin, like a pretty coin. The chicest coin you've ever uh, seen. And actually it is chic. And you can pretend that this is the one that Jamie Lee Curtis herself was, was holding, holding up. Yeah. <laughs> And to be fair, they are chic. I think yeah. Dorit was just really trying to sell the fantasy that day. If you don't know the reference, we're talking about Real yeah. Life of Beverly Hills. Jamie Lee Curtis was on. It's a whole moment. It's a meme. It's a whole lifestyle. Yes. Honestly, it's a lifestyle. It really is funny, though. It is hilarious. <laughs> Let's talk about Delta Work. If you don't know, Delta, Delta actually has had a podcast on the Mom Network, which is Alaskan Willem's uh, podcast network, for a while. But it was with Raja. They used to have a show called okay. Very That with Raja and Delta. I guess around the time All Stars started... Raja is either taking a permanent break or a part-time break, but they did rename the show Very Delta. Oh. And now, instead of it just being a podcast, it still is a podcast, but they also film it and put it on YouTube. And Delta, on her own now, she does have guests, but has become like a overnight star again. Yes. And that's why I said I feel like she's having her own renaissance. Yes. She really is. What I do love, I love when queens get this kind of stuff because it's like, I love when these queens get to be appreciated for how talented and how funny and how real they are. Right. You know? And especially what happens to the older girls. That's my favorite. I know. But have you seen some of the clips of Delta's show? I've seen, I haven't watched the show, but I've seen clips. Yeah, because it's all over TikTok and yes. Instagram everywhere. <laughs> the subject matter is just ridiculous. Everything I've seen, it's like but basically hilarious. just her complaining yeah. like about random things. About stuff that you're like, I would never even think about that. <laughs> I know! She got, goes on tangents about Subway a lot. One, the fact that they're called like artists, like the sandwich makers, you know, and, and then like <laughs> complaining about the mayo and the right amount of mayo and just like nonsense. But it is really funny. Yeah. I feel like the first thing that went viral was the asking for a table. That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> so she tells this story, which is so funny and so ridiculous to me. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, restaurant workers and waiters are scared yeah. of Delta now. People make memes and jokes about that too. Well, because it's kind of like, it's very like Karen of her, but it's also like so funny. It's the way so she random, says yeah. it, it's like... Because <laughs> I feel like it's almost more ridiculous than something even a Karen would get mad about. Yeah. And she, the way she says it all is so funny. <laughs> so she tells this story about you know, going into a restaurant and asking for a table. Sometimes they'll sit here at a booth and that's not what she asked for. She asked for a table, yeah. not a booth. And the difference between those and going on yeah. and on about that. And she, just, it's if, so funny. If you don't say booth, you don't get a booth. <laughs> I didn't say I want a booth. I said I wanted a table. <laughs> well, the table, there's a physical table at either one. That was my thought. I was like, I know. one has chairs. Say you want a table with chairs or you want a booth. But like, right. either one has a table. Right. That's what I thought. I also just think it's so funny too, because like, if they start walking you up to a booth, why don't you just say, oh, can we actually have a table? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The stuff that she gets on tangents about is so random and something yeah. that is so easily fixable, right. too, that I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even come yeah. up in my mind. <laughs> That's why it's so funny, too. People also are living for the set theme and how it's like an old talk show and these transitions that she has are just like camp 90s, 80s <laughs> television. Um, and then she does have guests a lot. And Raja finally did come on recently, Okay. Which is nice. So I wonder now that, I, I haven't really heard, but I wonder if Raj is going to join her back. But I feel yeah. like this is, I mean, there's so many podcasts, right? Like so many queens already have podcasts. Right. And, and, and they had been doing that for a while. And I really had never, I think I'd listened to a few of the episodes early on, a couple of years back. But it's not like the their podcast was making waves. And yeah. now Delta on her own is making waves, you know? Yeah. So it'd be... I could see why it we, could set it back almost. Yeah, like I, I would want to keep her on her own. At this yeah, point. I would let Delta keep doing Delta. They need to let let it ride and ha see what happens. Have it be two separate shows. Yeah, it's just so lovely for someone like Delta who, you know, way back on season three, and then she was working for Rue for a while doing the hair. Right. Unfortunately, it's always that thing of which is not real life, but mm -hmm. with the fandom in the show, it's like once you're off the show, and if if you're not coming back, then you're almost dismissed or not seen right. kind of thing. And so I feel like that she's in a space now where she's made her own lane and that, that's so fierce too. Since she's on TikTok and stuff, it's like the whole new generation is seeing her that maybe yeah. didn't watch her original season. Right. So it's right. like... People who don't even know Delta. Yeah. yeah. So And now they're, they're laughing at her. You know, it's like laughing with her, I guess, is yeah. the right... <laughs> I hope because I know that a lot of the TikToks I've seen 
haven't been actually posted by her or by like the channel. Uh -huh. So people are like taking the clip. Like I hope that she's able to monetize that in some way. Right. Because I always think about that. I wanted to bring up a couple of other queens that have had similar viral renaissances. Okay. And the biggest one and the first one that comes to mind is definitely Jasmine Masters. Oh yeah. Because I think about that all the time for her too with her clips and her quotes that people do right. use on TikTok and everywhere. And she was for kind years. of the first one. Like she called herself like the meme queen and everything. Right. Like, but. I wonder if she's able to monetize that and continue to. Right. That's that's difficult. Um, Especially when it's just like a meme because it's like Yeah. A then, meme is hard, but like Yeah. Specifically her audio on TikTok, like that should be able to be monetized and she should be getting cuts of all that. Oh yeah. That's for Jesus. Delta too though, I hope at least at the very least that it's hopefully like getting people to see it and be like, oh, she actually is funny and they want to go watch the show. If they're not making the money from those, right. hopefully it's helping- At least get more viewers. Their brand in some way, yeah. yeah. Or like even helping the turnout to their shows right. and stuff like that. Right. Getting them more bookings. Yeah. You know it has to, uh -huh. you know? Well, I'm sure, I mean, as you get more attention to online, then I mean, now Delta could come back for an all, like, I don't know, an all stars, you never know. Like, yeah. I don't know if she would ever do that, but. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if she'd want to, but also at the same time, it's like Jasmine did come back to All Stars, right? But that didn't really. It didn't work matter. out for her. It didn't matter. Like we don't. I don't but need she, to see Jasmine in those challenges. Because when Jasmine came back, she tried to bring her that meme, like the online presence, kind of into her. Because remember, she did the. She tried to do. She some tried to jokes, do the stand up, but, yeah. and she thought she could do that same kind of thing. Yeah. It didn't work out on, well, on that's the, the problem show. Is everything, and I think Delta's the same way. Where it's not like she's rehearsed. Yeah. Jokes. I think she's literally just, just ranting about random yeah. things that are going on. In so it her didn't mind. translate. Yeah. But that's the thing with Jasmine is I don't need her to win a drag race challenge. Yeah, no. Because that's what I like to see her do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I think also just that idea of of what the fandom sometimes thinks of queens and the worth that, that's put on them is based on performance on the show. Right. And what they do on the show. As to where, like, there's so much more value to people than that. Right. And we, just a few weeks back, we talked about Cheryl Hole kind of always being the butt of a joke of mediocre and no, you know, this and that. When in fact, when you go see her live and see the cast, like, she's always the best one. Right. Drag Race is not a perfect representation mm -hmm. of how good a drag queen is. Totally. Most of the challenges on Drag Race aren't going to really occur when you go see a drag queen. Yeah. No. Just the lip sync part. And everybody <laughs> has random bad weeks like you never know what's yeah. gonna happen when you're on tv i don't know yeah <laughs> that's why i love moments like these is where people can be seen for exactly who they are mm -hmm. and be celebrated for that right so i hope that it continues for delta and more good stuff comes from it i also included mayhem it's different obviously because it's a performance but it definitely was a massive moment at yes the time. and she also speaking of that delta do not come back and try to talk for your talent because mayhem did the same thing and it also yes. didn't work out for her she didn't do it as good as it was in that performance she tried to sing part of her song live and it didn't that didn't work and it was i was actually excited when she was gonna do that because oh, i was yeah. like oh that's she the meme so good yeah. yeah and the eyes but yeah. it, she just didn't serve the same level of yeah. intense <laughs> all right because uh, that's why it was so funny. It's like intense, like... <laughs> intense for just no reason. Yeah. <laughs> I guess when you have a viral moment, it's not set to last forever, right? right. It's meant to be a moment. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, you know, is there a need? Is there a reason? Or should they be trying to extend that moment to something different? It comes down to fame. I mean, it's getting your name and your... It's attention. Yeah, I mean, it gives you more attention to your drag. Yeah. And I mean, if you go viral, then... I guess from there, it's what you do with it. Yeah. It puts you in the spotlight more, so then if you want to take it bigger than that, then that's on right. you, I guess. It's like, you're, you've are you been given the spotlight, right. and then opportunities probably come your way, and then from mm -hmm. there, it's like, what do you do right. with it? I thought we'd shift the focus a little bit and talk about queens who, in a similar vein, like Delta, where gone from the drag race zeitgeist for a while in terms mm -hmm. of being a big name. Yeah. And then you come back to All Stars, and that provides a renaissance. And that's yeah. something where, like, when we talk about people like that, it's kind of... I hate to say it like this, but it's like they kind of not fell off, but just disappeared from the timeline a little bit. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like that thing happens on Instagram where all of a sudden you're like, I haven't seen so-and-so's post for months. Yeah. And then you go and look at their page and you're like, well, they're still posting. Why am I not seeing them? Right. It's very that energy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the queens that really have that for me, Tatiana, 
Mindy yes. Lacrim, TKB, yes. Kylie Sneak Love, and Raja O'Hara. Yes. Trinity was the immediate thought that came to my mind. TKB, yeah. not Trinity. <laughs> I, I think a lot of these you can say, they're also redemptions. Redemptions yes. for sure. But I feel like they're different than a normal redemption because totally. people like Kylie never really got a spotlight. Mm -hmm. Or Raja was like a villain on her season. Yeah. So you gotta, they all got massive redemptions, but also just... Everyone's still celebrating and loving them now, uh -huh. still. And that, yeah. that's what I love. Benda La Creme, really, because I feel uh, like yeah. now she's kind of like a legacy, like in the Drag Race franchise. Right. But at first, like, I mean, she was always good, but it yeah. wasn't until All, All Stars that you really were like, wow. Well, and to go back to All Stars 3, you know, when that cast was announced, it really seemed, at the time, before it aired and all of that, you know, Trixie, Shangela, and Milk, I would say were really the three that, like, had made the most after their initial season. Right. And there was others there too, but I felt like they were the ones that people had the highest expectations of. Uh -huh. And Dela, even though Dela had won two challenges on her initial season, it's like we didn't have much expectation. Right. We weren't seeing her as regularly as maybe some of the other folks. Yeah. But damn, yeah, she came and she came and showed all of us. I know. She really did. I still do wonder how that season would have gone if she didn't eliminate herself. <laughs> I would say that she would have won, but at the end of the day, you never still, know. they still yeah. did the jury. Right. So she could have been like Shangela, not even eligible to the yeah. Maybe they wouldn't have picked her. Tatiana is a very clear cut case because, yes. you know, way back in season two, even though she made top four and she won Snatch Game, she just really wasn't out there the way mm -hmm. everyone else from her cast from All Stars 2 were. Yeah. I mean, All Stars 2 was a true, every single one was, at the time, they were like the biggest names in drag. But Tatiana just wasn't at that truly in terms of just name recognition and all of that she wasn't at that level you know yeah and she came in and got a massive renaissance massive fan base that's a true renaissance to me mm -hmm. you know like people fell in love with her got oh, to yeah. meet her for the first time really mm -hmm. you know it was that was incredible and i feel like all three of the girls from all-star six really really did that as well raja was like so good i mean like really turned it around it's really meeting her for the first time. Yeah, because you know? like the first season, I didn't really like her that much. Like, no, she was playing a role. Yeah, she, she, and she's. I think she even said, you know, like I was not in a good headspace. I was not a right. Good, it's like she wasn't in a good place in her life, so she was delivering the the some of the venomous stuff she was delivering. And it's fun when you get to see like when she came back. It was totally different. Even just her personality was so fun. That's the fun part too when you get to watch them and they're doing so much better too because it's yeah. like. Now they're more confident too, and just seeing that, the growth, it's yeah. so fun. And you know, for her, it hadn't been as long as some other other right. folks, but it truly did feel like first time meeting her. You yeah. Know? Uh, with Kylie, it had been a lot, I mean, out of anyone here, it had been the longest. With and Kylie, it was definitely like the, I feel like the first you really got to see her personality too. Oh, it's 100% meeting someone for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Us that follow drag outside of drag race, we knew she'd been slaying it and how right. great she was. And so it was so great to see what we'd always seen, mm -hmm. finally see the whole world. Yes. Sweet, you know, I think Raja came back as a different person. And I think yeah. TKB came back as a better evolved person as well. Although I will say with TKB, we did see when she got in her head a little bit at the end. It, yeah. it was reminiscent of some of the time Older, she got in her yeah. head back in the day. But that's also lovely and relatable too. Uh -huh. like, not everyone can be perfect all the time. Right. And it shouldn't be expected. With Trinity K. Bonet though too, I just want to add, I also just loved the redemption arc of seeing her get to do Beyonce I know. after the whole thing with like Bob or Bob. <laughs> The other, laugh, the other, the other, the other one, the other one. <laughs> After Bianca said to her, like the whole thing about, oh, I am Beyonce. Yeah, the, that okay, whole. Okay, Beyonce, calm down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I loved that getting to see her slay Beyonce. Right. It's still, it's not the point of the video either, but it is still so crazy for Jan winning that as Gaga was a redemption for her for the musical, but like this is a bigger redemption and bigger like yes. legacy and time waiting uh-huh and so it's so funny that like we should have been happy that jen got her win but like no she delivered drag legendary iconicness that like we've been waiting on for literally like seven years you know and we've been waiting for someone to do a good, a good beyonce. beyonce like <laughs> finally yeah that's true too i know it wasn't in snatch game although, but it was still like beyonce right although to be fair <laughs> We'd also been waiting on a good Gaga. Yeah, that was, that's that true. Too. She did do a good Gaga. Yeah. Anyone else you'd like to see get a renaissance, whether it's coming back to the show or just be celebrated 
the way that maybe Delta or Jasmine we talked about. I really want to see Jasmine Fox. Does she still do drag? I'm... She does on a, she does on occasion. Because she was so funny. She's so beloved from her season. The drag game, we know as drag queens, and trying to do drag and do it as a living, or if you can't in your city, which so many cities, that's what people don't talk about, is there's so many cities where you cannot make a living doing drag full time. Oh, yeah. They do not pay us out at the bars yeah. like they pay the Rue Girls, you know. Right. And even some of them, if they are not at that, like, X level, mm -hmm. they're still making probably what the local girls are right. making, and it's not enough to live off of. It's hard to maintain that and keep going at that level, but then keep your sanity and your day job and your right. life and all of that, too. It's, yeah. It's a tricky balance that not everyone can do. But, yeah, she is so beloved. And I only say that I don't know her actual story, but I know that drag is not her full-time gig. Okay. So I know that that is the case for a lot of people where it's yeah. just not, it's financially difficult to do. I, yeah. Whether you ha are world famous or not. Which is crazy to me, like, when you think about a queen that's been on TV, like, no. and, and, and they're not even, you And know. like you said, so beloved. Yeah. Like, sometimes, too, it's like having the right team to help you do that. Yeah. You know? Definitely. So it could be pieces like that as well. Right. Who knows? We'll have to get Jocelyn on and ask her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I feel like now, now that get they have foxy. that. <laughs> right. Now that they have that Vegas thing, I love when they add people just randomly to the show. Yeah. Like for a month or something. Yeah. But how cool would that be if all of a sudden Jocelyn was just there for a month? Like people well, would die. Yes. And I love like, just like when they're adding older people, like, I don't know, like mix it up and like, yeah, I think that's fun. Yeah. Because they've had, the cast has been kind of the same for most of it, hasn't it? Um, well, up until this year, I feel okay. like this year they've really been rotating new people in and out. Well, that's good. It's interesting, and this is, again, kind of, it's all on the subject matter of remaining relevant and this and that. You know, as there's more seasons and more franchises and all that, it does seem like it is more difficult to gain that bigger following that, that some of our legends do have. Yeah. And I was thinking, too, which I love, and I think most people do, and I think the reason why they, they do have mainly older season queens on the Vegas show. Like, Jasmine Kennedy's been the only newer queen. Wow, and yeah. And I, I think that's because there's so much drag race and so much drag to keep up with. The average people still really don't know all the newer queens. Yeah. Went out the other night and talking to people, and they were like, oh, God, we haven't kept up with drag race in so long. And and I hear that a lot, where people uh -huh. are saying, like, oh, I haven't really watched since X season. Right. You know? and some people catch up on marathons and stuff like that, but, like, staying in it like we we stay in it because of the channel and all right that. not everyone does yeah so and it's understandable and i think that's why all stars is so key too you really need that to solidify now uh -huh. kind of thing does that yeah because also the all stars shows us just like such a high caliber now right it's always my favorite season all stars yeah. is always the thing i look forward to most because it's just I don't know. It's so good. And there's something comfort. It's comforting to see people you already know. Yes. To see them do better. Well, because then you have someone immediately you can root for usually. It's more dynamic because you have a longer story arc. Yeah. Like everything we were just saying with TKB. If you had never watched season six. Yeah. On repeat, like we used to back in the day, then you wouldn't know why that was so how, right. more powerful than just the performance. Right. You know, so you said Jocelyn and I agree. Jocelyn would be great to see get a renaissance. Uh, but I would also really love that for Mrs. Kasha Davis. I forgot to name that quick. <laughs> I would love to see that for Mrs. Kasha Davis because I feel like she is so funny and so talented and just didn't get appreciated for yeah. what she contributes to drag. Again, I was like, I thought I was surprised when she went home so early. I thought she was doing pretty well. I mean, no. I think like... There yeah. was such a stigma when it comes to, like, older queens sometimes. The judgment, like, it was very clear that her judgment was way harsher than they treated any of those supermodels. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was... She messed up the word welcome, and they were like, well, she's a work... <laughs> they even literally said she's a workhorse queen, so she shouldn't mess up, not for one second. But she it's like... She should always be funny. It's like, what... You're not holding anyone else to that yeah. expectation. Jesus. Just, like, they all are... They all are drag queens, like... <laughs> and she still did better than so many of... You know, like, yeah. that's the thing, is... Yeah. Ugh. That, that's a whole different subject matter that we could Because wasn't that the Rusical? No, that was the Despies. Oh, she went home with the Despies. The Despies, yeah. okay. Well, let us know who you want to see have a renaissance and what you think about Delta's renaissance and some of the other queens we talked about today. Yes. We're going to head on out of here because we're just silly, stupid little girls. Ooh. And I have one last thing to say. Glad you so got, chic. Glad you got to chic me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That is the chicest wind chime I've ever seen. It really is very chic. It really is. <laughs>